name is Lexi and today we will be talking about all of the books that I plan to read in the month of March. So excited because today we're gonna to be talking about my March TBR. Also, just really quick, a lot of you have been asking about my bookshelf tour, and that is going up next Saturday. I wanted to mention it because I know a lot of people have been asking me about it. So I have quite the lengthy TBR, which may or may not be a mistake. I don't know, stay tuned to find out, I guess. But I know that while I have a lot of projects that are due in the month of March for grad school, I also get spring break. I am so excited about spring break. I'm literally not doing anything. I think that's one of the reasons why I'm so excited for March in general. Anyways, okay. So I'm participating in three different book club like read-alongs during the month of March, as well as two read-a-thon type things that are happening in the community. I am participating in Middle Grade March and the Backlist Readathon, and I'm very, very excited. So let me go ahead and start first with my TBRs for both of those. So the first readathon that I'm doing is the Backlist Readathon, and this is hosted by a plethora of amazing booktubers, all of whom I'm subscribed to and all of whom who I love, but also a couple of my friends are doing it. So Zoe from Zoe Reads and Chan from Chandler Ainsley and Mel from Mel to the Any. They're all doing it as as well and I just I love supporting my friends in the community so I definitely had to participate and I'm very excited about this TBR it's such a fun readathon by the way it's all about reading like titles that you already have or older books so I was super excited about that I'll also by the way go ahead and link down below like some information about it okay so prompt number one read your shortest title something that you have on your backlist that is your shortest title and for this one I am choosing come tumbling down by Shauna McGuire now technically this is a new release, so, but it is on my backlist. I did buy it. Does this count? I don't, I don't actually know, but I will be reading it for this readathon, so it counts now. This is only 203 pages. I'm very excited. I love short books. It's so random, but I really love short books, actually. And this is my favorite series. It's a continuation of my favorite series, and it follows two characters that we have read in the series before, Jack and Jill. And I'm very excited to see kind of where Shauna McGuire goes and continues on with their story. So I can't tell you anything about this because this is the fourth book in this series and it does kind of spoil some of the things that happened in two different books. So I will instead just tell you about the series. The series is called the Wayward Children series and the first book is called Every Heart a Doorway. I highly recommend it. It's about a group of kids who have gone off to other worlds and kind of become like the saviors of those worlds and then somehow they are then taken away from their world. So it's like if Alice went to Wonderland, but she didn't want to leave Wonderland and then she came back. And so we kind of follow all of these different people who are trying to get back into their magical realm and magical world. And it's just a really fascinating and interesting series. It is adult, it is pretty dark, but I do recommend it. It's my favorite series of all time. Okay, number two, read a book on your backlist that intimidates you. that I have been putting this on all of my TBRs because I am determined to read this. But at this point, I think it would be fair to say that man, maybe I'm a little intimidated by this book. Here's why I'm intimidated by it. First of all, it's not very long, but at this point, I feel like I've just put so much pressure on it to be a great read because I think it's gonna be a five-star read that I am avoiding it. I, I've just, I think I need to admit it to myself. This is quite a lengthy book to read for a week. The readathon is only a week long, so I don't exactly know how that's gonna go. It's just under 500 pages. So I think I'm gonna have to work pretty hard to read this, but I'm up for the task. This is about a guy named Zach, and Zach finds a door to another world when he is younger, or he thinks that he finds a door to another world when he's younger. But instead of trying to open the door and go to another world, he decides that it's not real and he moves 
past it and he doesn't try to open the door. Flash forward to Zach as a graduate master student when he finds this very mysterious and rare book in the library and he reads his story if he had gone into that other world. And that kind of leads to a bunch of things that are happening. There's a secret society involved. There's a bunch of people who are out to try to find Zach. I think I'm gonna love this book. I just need to read it. <laughs> okay, the next prompt is read a book on your backlist that you added as a recommendation from someone else. And for that one, I have chosen Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor. Again, this is not smart for a readathon because this is like almost 500 pages. It's, it's like 400 and something. This is off of the recommendation of my friend Kat who actually bought these for me, which was so sweet. I love her so much. She's such a good friend. But this is actually one of Kat's favorite series or it was back in the day when she did read it. And so I'm very, very interested to pick it up. I think for this readathon, I just wanna get halfway through it. I'm okay if I don't read all of these books, but I'm going to try. So I don't know a ton about this book. I am very interested in it because it is written by Lainey Taylor, who is a master at voice in writing. She has such a beautiful writing style and presence. And I also know that this is kind of about forbidden love. And that's all I know. That's all I wanna know. I'm intentionally trying to go in as blind as possible so that I can be kind of surprised while I'm reading. And I'm very excited for this book. So I can't wait to read this. I'm very excited. Um, and again, thank you so much, Kat, for this. This means a lot to me. Prompt number four. Read a backlist title you are most excited to read. And that one is The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. I am kind of trying to double up in as many of these challenges as possible. <laughs> Prompt number five. Read a diverse backlist book. So the examples are LGBTQ+, POC, Fat Rep, Disability, Mental Health, any of that is in this category. So for this one, I chose The Mighty Heart of Sunny St. James by Ashley Herring Blake. Very excited to read this. One, because I've heard phenomenal things about Ashley's writing, and two, because this is a LGBTQ plus middle grade, which I think is very, very rare, and I think is important. So this is about a girl who actually receives a new heart. I think she's been kind of sick for a while, and she makes a list of things that she wants to do over the summer. So she wants to find a boy and kiss him find a new best friend, and do awesome things. But it's just kind of a coming of age novel. It's exploring also her relationship with her mom, her relationship with her body and her health, and then also with her best friend slash crush. I, I really can't wait to read it. And then the last book is a book with blue on the cover, which of course, The Mighty Heart of Sunny St. James has. That is my TBR for the Backlist Readathon. Wish me luck. I think I'm gonna need it. Then I am participating in middle grade March. So all of my subscribers are not gonna be surprised that I am participating in this because we all know that I'm completely obsessed with middle grade. I just think it's like so charming and so wholesome and so beautiful and usually so magically written. I think it's like my favorite age category to read from if I'm being totally honest and I've wanted to participate in this for such a long time so I can't wait. I'm going to go ahead and leave all of the information down below. I'm gonna leave both of the hosts announcement videos, all of the prompts, everything. So I highly recommend that you participate. I'm very excited. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about this. The first one is a book with illustrations. And for this one, I am choosing Mary Poppins by P.L. Travelers. I have read this uh, twice before, I believe. I read this once in high school and then once right after I graduated from college, I thought that it was really cute and well done. It's definitely been a while since I've read this, but I really enjoyed this. It is vastly different from the movie, but it is, so beautiful, I think. So this is just about a nanny named Mary Poppins who visits Michael and Jane and sprinkles a little bit of magic into their life. So always a good time. The next one is a book about stories. And for this one, I have chosen Nightbooks and this is by J.A. White. I'm very excited. I've heard amazing things about this book and I've been meaning to get to it for such a long time. I actually wanted to read this more around October because I've heard it's a little bit scary, but it fits the prompt perfect and I just, I feel like it's fate, you know? So this is about a boy named Alex and Alex is captured by a witch and he is kind of kept prisoner by her and the only way that he can escape is basically by telling her different stories every single night. So it's a little bit of a twist on like the Arabian Nights kind of a setup. He tells this witch all of these different stories while he tries to hatch a plan to escape with the other prisoner. It sounds really exciting, it sounds really fun, it's supposed to be kind of spooky, but also really atmospheric. I'm excited to read this. 
Prompt number three is to read a mystery. And for this one, I am reading The Book of Unwise Magic, and this is by Claire Fayers, and I'm so excited about this one. I picked this up from my local library. I'm gonna be trying to read more library books in these TBRs and hauls and things like that, just because I think it's really important to support your local library, and I'm going to be trying to do that more often. I actually picked this up on a whim. So this is about a girl who is trying to solve a mystery revolving around her family and mirrors, which I think sounds like a very cool combination. So this girl named Ava is actually trying to figure out what happened to her family who left this town under mysterious circumstances and nobody really knows what that's about. And so she comes and she tries to figure out the mystery of her family. And all she knows is that magic is involved, mirrors are involved, and she suspects that somebody named Lord Skinner is up to no good and possibly connected to all of this. I just, I can't wait. I'm so glad that I found this. And then the final prompt is to read a book that is like a screen to book adaptation. And for that, again, I'm just gonna be doing Mary Poppins. And I'm really excited about that because I loved the second Mary Poppins just as much as the first one actually. So what I think I'm gonna do is read the Mary Poppins book and then watch both of the movies back to back and I think it's just gonna be a really fun time so I'm very excited. Okay, so that is it for the two readathons that I'm going to be doing during the month of March. Let's talk about some of the books that I'm reading for the different book clubs. I love book clubs. I love book clubs so much. When I was a librarian, I actually ran all three at the library. I just think that they're so much fun. So I did a teen one, I did a tween one, and then I did an adult one, and they are just like my favorite things in the whole wide world. There's something that is just magical about reading a book and discussing it with your friends. It's the best thing in the world. So I try to participate in as many of my friends' readathons as I can. So the first book club that I am participating in, obviously, is Gavin and Jade's for their monthly middle grade. I love that book club. I love them. I love them so much. And what they are doing is they are doing a double booker of A Pinch of Magic and a sprinkle of sorcery, both by Michelle Harrison. And you guys, I don't know if you knew this, but A Pinch of Magic was like my favorite middle grade of last year. And this is so amazing because Gavin has actually gotten Michelle Harrison to come for their book club. So if you tune in for March, you'll actually get to listen to Michelle Harrison. You'll get to talk about her book with her. It's gonna be very, very exciting. And I highly recommend A, that you check out their book club, but also B, that you pick up the series because I loved the first one and I'm so excited for this one. So this is what this one looks like here. Actually, if I read the back, it's not going to spoil the other one at all. And I think it's a really cute snippet. So I'm just gonna go ahead and read what's on this cauldron. Three sisters with a magical secret, a race against time to find a place that exists only in fairy tales, a journey that will take them into unimaginable danger. And then it says, set sail on a spellbinding adventure from the best-selling author of A Pinch of Magic. And also huge shout out to Gavin who gifted me this beautiful, beautiful book. This means so much to me, Gavin, and it means even more that you gifted it to me. I am so glad that we're friends. He is just such a light in the world. The next book club that I will be trying to participate in is Heather's book club. And she does that, I believe, with Carly. And that is the cover Horse Book Club. So it is basically all about aesthetic books. They read things that have beautiful book covers, which I mean, of course I'm gonna wanna join that. First of all, I love Heather, but second of all, I love aesthetic books and they always pick the most beautiful looking books ever. So this is the March pick and I'm very excited. This is called All the Stars and Teeth and this is by Adeline Grace. I know that it is about a pirate and a mermaid and a princess and basically it's all about breaking some rules. There is a morally gray main protagonist and they go off on an adventure together. And of course, of course, the cover is just beautiful. I mean, 10 out of 10. And then the final book club that I will be participating in is Three Blondes and a Book Book Club. This is hosted by one of my best friends in the whole wide world, Kaylin, and also two of my really, really, really good friends, Zoe and Liv. I just love all of them so much. They are so positive, so fun, so funny. Of course, I'm gonna participate. And their book club pick is really fun for March because it's a middle grade and we love to see it. And the book that they have picked is The Girl Who Drank the Moon and this is by Kelly Barnhill. This actually won the Newbery. It is a phenomenal book. 
I've already read it, but I am gonna try to do a reread of it. I feel like it has a lot of really fascinating commentary on so many things in society. So I'm definitely gonna be doing a reread of this and I'm very excited. So I have four books in front of me. The first one I'm not gonna show or talk about because it's actually for my blind date with a book which I do and it's kind of where one of my friends suggests the book to me and then I go out and I see if it's a match in heaven or a date from hell. I will go ahead and link down my last one, but I'm gonna leave this one actually a surprise. So here it is, okay. And then I have three library books here that I picked out and I'm very excited for. So I'll briefly go ahead and talk about those. So the first one is Still Life with Tornado and this is by A.S. King. This is a YA surrealism story and I'm very, very excited. If you don't know what surrealism is, it is very similar to magical realism. But this is about a girl and she is really struggling with dealing with something that has happened to her in the past and What's happening is she's actually getting advice and getting visited by different versions of herself. So she is seeing herself when she's 24, when she's in her 30s and 40s, when she's a little girl, and they're all kind of trying to help her cope with something that's happening. It sounds very sad, it sounds very poetic, and it sounds really genius if I'm being quite honest. I mean, how awesome would it be to get coached by yourself? The next two I have here are middle grades and I'm very excited about them as well. I'm trying to read just a ton of middle grades in March in general. It's middle grade March. Also, I'm just in the mood for middle grades. So the first one I have here is Hello Universe and this one, the John Newberry Award. I'm very excited about it. This is by Erin Kelly and it has a beautiful cover. I've actually heard so many wonderful things about this book and I've been meaning to pick it up for a while. So when I saw that it was available, I snatched it up and I was very excited. Normally I don't like reading the flaps, but sometimes I feel like the flap gives just enough information to kind of hook you. And that is the case with this one. So I am gonna read it. It says, Virgil is shy and misunderstood. Valencia is clever and stubborn. Kaori tells fortunes and reads the stars. Chet is the biggest bully in the neighborhood. They aren't friends. They don't all go to the same school. But when Chet pulls an unthinkable prank on Virgil and Virgil's pet guinea pig, Gulliver, the lives of these four middle schoolers collide in surprising and unexpected ways. Just a coincidence, or are some things meant to be? And then the final book I have here is The Library of Ever, and this looks so incredibly charming. I'm really, really excited about this. And this is about a girl whose parents are off traveling the globe, and she one day stumbles upon a library that has all of the knowledge in the world contained in it. And she has all these different adventures in the library. I think there was something about her going to the stars and the moon through this library, about discovering different magic things in this library and it sounds really wonderful. I'm very excited. I love discovering new middle grade authors. I think it's vital as a reader and as somebody who also possibly wants to be a writer for middle grade to constantly be searching for new and debut authors. It's a great way to support new authors and it's a great way to find new and favorite stories. So. I'm very, very excited to read this. And you guys, that is it. I know that this has been quite a lengthy TBR. Wish me luck. Will I actually read this? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I'm going to try though. I'm going to try very, very hard. Are you participating in the Backlist Readathon or in a middle grade March? What's one book that you're very excited about getting to this March? I am very curious to know. I love getting recommendations from you guys, as you know. If you like this video, by the way, please go ahead and hit the thumbs up. The interaction actually really helps my channel. It helps me know what you like from me. It just helps me all around. And also, if you're new, hi, welcome, hello. I make lots of new videos all about books. Obviously, I'm a little obsessed with books, if you can't tell. Feel free to hit the subscribe button and let's be friends. Okay, guys, that's it. I will see you next Saturday for my bookshelf tour. And until next time, you guys, keep your head in the clouds and your heart in a book. And I will talk to you very soon. Bye!